guys, welcome to the DMX Show. I'm your host Shane and Sparky Man of Team Haters sent me Axiom CS uh, version 6. He sent it to me earlier last week and I just got around to flashing it yesterday. Um, I really do like this ROM. It has all the elements that you love and know from Axiom ICS for the Bionic. Uh, you guys know Droid Theory of... Uh, the Droid Theory team, I guess we should say, or Droid Hive. Uh, he created the Axiom ROM for the Bionic way back when. It has seen a rebirth uh, with this version of the ROM by Sparky Man. And like I said, it's got tons of features. Uh, we'll get started with the launcher. This is the Apex launcher. Now you can go to Menu and Apex Settings, and there's several things that you can change. My favorite thing to do here is turn on the transition effect cube out. Believe it or not, having this transition effect is really what got me wanting to root and hack my phone. I saw somebody else that had it and I wanted that for myself. That's really what got me started. Uh, but other than that, you can go to the home screen settings. You can change the grid size so you can have more applications on your home screen. You can change the number of screens. Uh, so many different things that you can do here to really customize the look and feel of your launcher. You've got dock settings, drawer settings, uh, behavior settings, folder settings, all sorts of stuff just in Apex alone. Uh, but we won't get too caught up in the launcher today because there's so much more to this ROM. If we go into the app drawer, you'll see that it includes uh, Beats Control and also the Bluetooth SEO app. Uh, some other things that it does include are, well, the G apps are included in this ROM. Um, looks like Wi-Fi Tether is also included in the ROM. If you go into Axiom Toolbox, you'll see that you have an overclocker here. So if you click on the overclock to 1.1, it actually, uh, from what Sparky Man said, it actually puts you at 1.2. And then if you go to overclock to 1.2 gigahertz, it actually puts you to 1.23. Uh, so all you have to do is just click on that and allow it. And now you're overclocked at 1.1 gigahertz, which is pretty incredible. Uh, if you did go to overclock 1.2, um, that would be similar to like a Galaxy Nexus is on a dual core at 1.2 gigahertz. Uh, so you would see an improvement in your speed. And I can see just right off the bat overclocking my phone that I do see some speed enhancements. You see how fast uh, the app dock loads. I mean, it really does make a difference. Then, of course, Beats Control. Uh, this gives you access to settings where you can enable different settings, sort of like DSP Manager for any of you guys that are familiar with CM9. And... Uh, the Bluetooth control. We won't get really heavy into that. It does include a file manager, which is good. If we go into settings, you'll see one of my favorite features is the ROM control from Android Overgang Project has been incorporated into this build as well as the theme chooser. You can choose from several themes in the Android Play Store. Um, anything that works with CM9 or AOKP will work with this ROM. I have not had a chance to download any themes, but all you have to do is select a theme, choose apply, and it applies the theme on the fly very quickly, uh, and then your ROM is all themed out. So we'll go back into settings and ROM control, and I'll show you guys just a few things that you can expect from ROM control. You have your general UI, uh, where you can disable the boot animation if you don't like it. You can allow 180 degree rotation, so that you can turn your phone all the way upside down, and it's just going to follow you uh, wherever you turn your phone. That's pretty cool. And I want to make sure that we are nice and clear like that. Okay, so we'll, you have your LCD density. You can turn off the CRT animation, which that's your CRT animation. If you don't like that, you can turn that off. And you can have a custom carrier label. I always like to put uh, DMX Wireless or Droid Modder X. So anyhow, now if I... Let's see, if we go to the lock screen, it should now say DMX. No? Okay, well, that may require a reboot. For some reason, that didn't set. Okay, well, I guess I must have hit cancel on accident. DMX Wireless. And if you pull down... Yeah, okay, so it never showed up. Hmm. You have some navigation bar tweaks. You can enable the bar if you want to. I don't enable it simply because we have the capacitive touch buttons here. So I just kind of keep it simple. But there's, you can put any app there if you wanted to. So really and truly, I guess you could enable it and just put some custom apps for quick access. Uh, you have lock screen options. You can have up to eight items in your lock screen, which is really cool. Uh, you do have your power menu options. That's for whenever you press and hold the power menu. You have some reboot options there. LED options for your notification LED. 
Uh, you do have toggle options. You can choose to enable the toggles. And you can also change the toggle layout. Uh, if you like buttons, you can have those. Let's see, I prefer just the regular buttons like so. Uh, you can choose to have your brightness bar. You can choose the location, the clock. You can choose a center clock, which is what I like. And to do that on the fly. Battery, you can choose the battery style. I like a text only battery. Of course, you can choose the color for all that as well. The performance doesn't work in AOKP ROM because you have to use the Axiom settings. Overall, I really like this ROM. It does give you overclocking on the Bionic with Ice Cream Sandwich. There are a few things uh, that are buggy here. Hardware acceleration is not working properly, so YouTube, Netflix, those types of things are not going to work properly. Uh, we'll try the camera out real quick just to see if it's working. We'll put it in landscape mode and try to take a picture and see if that's working camera seems to be working it did take a picture uh, we'll go to the front facing camera forgive me for not shaving we'll take a picture and that works so the camera's working just fine we'll go to camcorder and the camcorder does force close so that's an issue uh, we'll go to play store and try to see about YouTube real quick Okay, so I got YouTube installed, and we'll test it out real quick just to make sure that it works. Let's head to Zito Max's channel. Zito Max is my buddy. He does high on Android, and uh, you guys should check him out. Let's see. We'll go see if one of his videos will play. Looks like it does, and it is in high quality, which is awesome. So that's working. Uh, YouTube is working. I don't know about Netflix. Let's try one more video just to be sure you guys saw it was working. We'll go to WW. What would Josh do? We'll go to his channel real quick and check it out. Make sure it's working on this build. I think it will be. So another one of my buddies. This is what would Josh do? And I present to you. He's covering all your sprint, sprint devices. But anyhow. Looks like YouTube's working just fine on this build of Ice Cream Sandwich for the Droid Bionic. Uh, so be sure to check it out. Uh, furthermore, we'll go ahead and install this ROM. You need to be on, uh, you need to be rooted, obviously. You need to be on 902 or 905. And you need to have the Bootstrap Recovery install. That's the Bionic Bootstrap. You could use SafeStrap. I personally use Bionic Bootstrap for this build. It's plenty stable. And um, I feel totally comfortable using Bionic Bootstrap with this ROM. Uh, so we'll get into the install guide. Okay, so you're going to boot into recovery via Bionic Bootstrap. And as soon as everything pops up, the first thing you want to do is scroll down to Wipe Data Factory Reset. Uh, you'll scroll with the up and down volume buttons and select with the power. So we'll select Wipe Data and then we'll go down to Yes, Delete All User Data. That'll take just a few seconds. So we'll just give it a few little minutes here and then we'll move forward. As soon as the data wipe is complete, we will scroll down to a wipe cache partition. We'll select that with the power button. Go down to yes, wipe cache. This should not take as long. Okay, when that's finished, we're going to go down to advanced. And wipe Dalvik cache. Select that with the power button. And go down to yes, select that with the power button. When that's finished, we'll go back. You're going to go to install zip from SD card. Now you need to be sure to move uh, the Axiom CS file that you've downloaded from the link in the description. Go ahead and move that to your external SD card or else uh, Bionic Bootstrap won't be able to pick it up. And you're going to choose zip from SD card. Now notice that you don't have to install any G apps. They're all included. You just have to install Axiom CS uh, version 06. This is the AOKP build that was sent to me by Sparky Man of Team Haters. So we'll go ahead and flash this. It should take, you know, less than five minutes. Kind of watch it do its thing here. And then we'll reboot the phone. Okay, so it's finished. Now this says don't forget to install the G apps before you reboot. Uh, but I was told that it included the G apps. So I guess we will uh, go ahead and reboot it and see if it included the G apps. Man, I sure hope it does because I did not download the G apps. If it doesn't include it, then you guys will know that you have to install the G apps. Let's see, we will reboot the system now. And I was also told that this had a custom boot animation, so I guess we'll see about that. Bag it out so you guys can see. 
So while this boots up, guys, uh, you can check me out at DroidModerX.com for the latest in Android and technology news. You can follow me at DroidModerX on Twitter uh, for all the latest updates in Bionic and other phone news. That's a pretty cool animation. I like that a lot. It's kind of a honeycomb ripple effect. Uh, also, be sure to click on the subscribe button if you have liked this video. And you also should click the like button because it helps me out a ton. It's kind of like a pat on the back anyways. We'll go ahead and let this boot up and make sure that it did install the G apps like I was told it would. Okay, guys, so very quickly, I just wanted to confirm to you guys that it did load the G apps. Also, I encountered a boot loop. If that happens to you, pull the battery and then hold volume up and power until you see these lights flash. These lights will come up and then the screen will go dark and then you just let go of the buttons and then you will be in clockwork mod recovery. From there you can wipe data factory reset and then reboot your phone and you should boot up just fine. Um, other than that, that is Axiom CS-ROM. I've liked it a whole lot guys. Uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.